This action right here, hitting record and then hitting upload, would prove to be more valuable than getting a degree. Formal education just doesn't hold as much weight as it used to. It's really hard to justify going to school and then paying 40 years towards student loan interest to be handed a degree that doesn't even qualify you for underpaid entry-level jobs that actually require three years of experience right out the gate. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna tell you how my combined 10,000 followers has proven more valuable to me than getting my BFA in graphic design. Like many people, I started a YouTube channel because I thought I could hit upload a few times, boom and I'd go viral and then my future would be made, I'd be a, you know, an influencer, a YouTuber. And I was very excited to see the results of those videos, but I only got a handful of subscribers and the majority of those I was related to. I was disappointed, but whenever we're starting out, we've all been there. That's the spot that we've all been in. And that's the spot that actually makes or breaks a lot of people. And most people actually fail. I mean, there are millions of YouTube channels out there and just a bunch being started each day, but it's kind of like a graveyard because how many of those are actually active and how many of those actually stuck with it? And honestly, it broke me because whenever I graduated, I thought, okay, it's time for me to get a real job. It's time to stop you know, goofing off and messing around, it's time to start making that salary because we're spoon fed this American dream of you go to school, you get a job, you have kids, you retire happy and then you die. I was applying to job after job. I mean, my family was hounding me for it because they were like, you need to get something, but I was applying to basically everything I could see on Indeed. And it sucked because nobody would hire me. Like I wasn't getting any callbacks. I was just getting rejections. I would go to some interviews. There were some companies I would interview with like maybe four or five times and they would still ultimately reject me. Post-production Dante here. I'm actually gonna read you a freaking rejection email that I got that was one of the most frustrating. Dante, absolutely nothing was holding you back from getting the position. You rocked the interview. I like your passion and personality and so did blank. You have strong design skills and we thought you would be a great fit with us. It literally came down to you and another candidate. Unfortunately for you, the other candidate had stronger previous design intern experience and also has creative agency experience. And that's what gave them the nod over you. It was not an easy decision and I only wish we could hire both of you. That's why I say to keep in touch. You never know what the future brings. And I would be happy to provide any feedback to your design work. Definitely stay in touch. When I graduated, I knew that I lacked experience and that's exactly why I went to websites and made fake briefs for projects, for fake companies, fake skill, like all these things were, were fake, but it was just an opportunity for me to flex my design skills. But ultimately it didn't matter because I didn't get the job even after four in-person interviews. And this was a trend. I wasted a lot of time on like three, four, even five in-person interviews. Like, do you understand how much time you're taking out of someone's day? It's five hours a week. Almost five hours a week. That is extraordinarily frustrating. So then I finally did get a job. I got a call back and I got interviewed and got the job on the spot. And you know what's crazy about that is I realized that I signed up for an MLM. Three days later, I quit that job and I took an internship that was a 40 mile round trip and it was like 12 bucks an hour and the gas alone made it not even really that worth it. The voice in the back of my head was saying like, Dante, don't give up on YouTube videos, like continue to make content. And that's what lit a fire in my soul to ultimately continue and fire that channel back up. So in 2017, I landed my first full-time job uh, six months after graduation. I hit a thousand YouTube subscribers and I hit about like 2,500 on Instagram. And in 2018, that's when I got a higher paying job and I hit about 1,500 subscribers as well as about 3,000 on Instagram. If you're not from St. Louis, you probably know us based on one of two things. The first being the Gateway Arch. It's really our identity, but it's super cool because it's 630 feet tall, 630 feet wide, and nobody died making it. It's actually a really cool historical piece. If you don't know us for that, you probably know us for our leaderboard rankings on things that involve crime. If you Google what is the most dangerous city in America, St. Louis is number one. And Forbes has done us the great honor of putting us not one, but two years back to back at the top of their most dangerous city list. I'm not gonna lie to you and say it's completely safe here. I mean, it is a major city and crazy things do happen, some that I have seen with my own eyes. But I bet you didn't know that St. Louis has a farmer's market that's older than the Bill of Rights. A waffle cone started here and our style of pizza, it's way better than what Chicago's dishing up up there, which is actually a bread bowl full of pasta sauce and calling it Chicago style pizza. I don't quite understand that. I built this community around St. Louis content. There were people that were exploring the city through the videos I was making, which was a super cool thing. I have people coming up to me all the time that are like, hey, I really love your content, man. And hey, I really like how you're putting a better spotlight on the city. And it's really cool because that means that the content's resonating with people. I had people tell me that they moved here because of the content that I made 
on YouTube about St. Louis. And I can't say that my graphic design degree has had the same kind of impact. Because I was doing this whole YouTube thing, I was learning how to shoot videos. I was learning about gear. I was learning how to tell stories visually. I was learning how to set up a shot and frame a shot. I was learning how to do all of these things, how to present myself, not just on camera, but in person. All these things were translating to more opportunities. And in 2021, it got me the coolest job I'd say I've ever had which was a videographer and social media creator for Porsche and Ferrari here in St. Louis. Let me remind you that I didn't go to school for this. Graphic design did not teach me these things. The skills that I learned because I started a YouTube channel had gotten me this job with two of the most prestigious automotive brands in the entire world. And that community I was talking about, the one that I was building here in St. Louis, yeah, because of that, I was able to quit said job and then go full-time freelance for myself and start making videos and working with all these cool people, brands, businesses, not just here, but like other places. Like I just flew in from Detroit not that long ago for working with Jack Daniels because they saw my, my video content and they loved it. And not to mention like there's just all that Kansas City stuff, that was part of that too. When I first started out, like posting on social media is what got me most of my gigs. And now like it's a combination of that and word of mouth. Like I truly do believe that to some degree, the subscriber count is a vanity metric because if you really look at the, the numbers here, you can see I'm just shy of 3,000 subscribers. That in the grand scheme of things is not a lot of people. I see creators with 100,000 subscribers that can't even get 1,000 views on a video. I see other creators that have a million plus that can't even get 10,000. That's 1% of their following. Yet just shy of 3,000 subscribers on YouTube and 5,500 on Instagram has gotten me here. And obviously this is the TLDR version of the whole story. You can click above and you can see the freelance mini doc that kind of goes more in detail of the nitty gritty, but also I'm gonna be launching a podcast that's called This Isn't My Degree that's gonna be talking about this stuff. It's gonna give you basically a backstage pass of the life of a content creator. And I'm gonna be collaborating with a whole bunch of other creators that are you know, doing a whole bunch of different cool things that are both smaller and larger than what I do. I've evolved as a creator since 2015 when I started. I started out as a gaming creator, then I became kind of like a multi-theme vlogger, then I became a St. Louis content creator, and now I'm kind of pivoting into this more like instructional, educational approach, but also just kind of like giving you guys a glimpse of what this is really like. Because I, like many people, have romanticized the idea of being a full-time YouTuber and actually doing this, and now I feel like I'm finally taking it seriously. I've been really elevating what I do and really embracing some of these techniques that I've learned of how to make videos. I'm just excited to see where this whole thing continues to take me. Like I moved into a new space recently where I already have a place on the wall picked out for my 100,000 subscriber and my million subscriber plaque. I know I just said that it's a vanity metric, but I'm excited to get there and build a community of people that just are really cool. So hit that subscribe button, follow along. Let's get it.